really get a kick out of people enjoying my work. And that's kind of like my satisfaction. I mean, I enjoy the painting part of it, but when someone actually appreciates my work, that really makes me feel good. And up until now, it's only been like one painting that they've seen, or two paintings that they've seen. I'm, quite frankly, I'm, I'm afraid of what is going to happen as a result of this show. I could fall flat on my face. Uh, the possibilities are endless. I, I'm not going to. I know that. But it's the first time that this much of my work, or even this much of me, has been out in the public. And I've locked myself in, in this workshop for, for years now, and this is going to be the result of, of the work and the effort that I've put forth so far. And I'm excited, apprehensive, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not a good example of having taken art in high school. Um, my homeroom, through much, much of my high school, my homeroom, was an art studio. And at 7.30 in the morning, when I would go to school, there would be clay on my desk, and I would get the clay in my hands. There'd be paint on my desk, and I'd get the paint and the smells, and I'm going, I wish I was in this class. But because I was on a track for going to college, and there was a distinction between our classes and going to college at the time, I wasn't able to, to take um, our classes, even though we had uh, an abundance of classes. I did not pick up a paintbrush until I was 44 years old. And um, there's a, a train of thought that you will pick up a paintbrush when you're ready to pick up a paintbrush, or you will write a novel when you're ready to write a novel. Uh, it's unfortunate that you can't get a taste of a, a taste or a smell or a feel of art earlier age, earlier age, just so that it's it's into into your system. Um, while I didn't take classes in high school, I had those I had those senses touched very early. And somewhere there was a voice screaming that to get back to it or to, to find it and find a way to do it. I get up at 5 o'clock every morning and um, I do my journaling the first thing in the morning. I write three pages of conscious thoughts and hopefully in that thought the plans for the day come out. I read my goals aloud every morning and um, many of those goals are around my painting. For example, my next year's goals will be I know this already, to have 25 paintings completed and documented, fully documented. The documentation process is something that I do intentionally and with vigor and very focused. I think it's a very important part of the entire artistic process for several reasons. This would be a, a typical 4x5 transparency. Um, it's a step above it's a step above a, um, a slide transparency. And I do this just to make sure that I have a copy of, of my work. It provides me with a solid uh, book, my book, that if I wanted to go to a gallery owner to see if, about possibly showing my, my work in a gallery, the gallery owner could take this, put it on a, on a light table, and examine my work and pretty much instantly know whether or not my type of work is something that he or she would want in a gallery. I think you, a person as a painter, as an artist, needs to make sure that his stuff is not only documented, but properly copyrighted. My studio is my workshop. I, I call it a workshop, not a studio. Um, it's a place that I'm able to go to and I can, I can block out the entire world. I feel safe in here. It's it's an incubator for me. I sit here, I paint, I write, I think, I listen to music, and um, it's a place where ideas are able to to evolve. Um, it's a haven. It's a
it's almost to the point of being sacred. I know that's being a little bit dramatic, but in this area that we're in right now, I feel very much at home. And um, I can spend hours in here, or I can spend days in here. When I lay down paper for the first time, the way that I do it, I, I don't stretch it the way most watercolor artists do. Most art, watercolor artists will saturate their, their paper with water and tape it or staple it to a board, let it dry, and then, uh, and then begin the painting process. I take my paper and I put it down onto a board and then I use drafting tape drafting tape, not masking tape. I use drafting tape and I do an edge like that. I create a three quarter of an inch edge on, on that border. And what happens below is I will create a white edge all the way around. That edge goes all the way around. And it makes, makes for easier framing. This is a cream mat with a green liner quarter-inch liner. And what I try to do whenever I'm framing is to have the liner be a complementary color to, to a, a major color in the painting. The red and the green are complementary colors and I believe that it pops the red out a lot more. A frame and matting can, uh, especially the matting in, with regard to watercolor, can make or break a painting. It's good to have a framer who you know and trust, who knows you. Um, I've been using the same framer for about six years now, and the owner's name is Martin. I can bring my stuff into Martin at this point, and he will know exactly what I want and how I want it. I get excited about painting with people. It's, uh, it's a good way to, to get my stuff out there and to mingle with the, with the population and make some money. They come to see, see me paint and they're, they're friends. It's, it's not a fan club, but it's kind of like a fan club. And they make me feel good and they buy my stuff. Some time ago, the Montrose Businessmen's Association invited me to come up here and, and paint on a regular basis. And I come here every Sunday. Um, when I'm painting, I'm also selling my matted artwork and my, my note cards here and it gives me a time to be with people. He captures the um, essence of the spot, I think, beyond your, the norm. He's, he's just great. I landed in Venice, and uh, it, was, it was like falling in love. It was instant, it was profound, it was, it, it was wonderful. And uh, I continually go back to Venice at least once a year. Italy in general is a very colorful country, it's passionate, it's, it, it's, it's, it's filled with life. Uh, but Venice, Venice is a home for me. The first time I went to Venice, I could not get enough of it. I, I knew I only had three days there, and I tried to absorb as much as I could, both in my cameras and, and the actual experience of everything Venice had to offer. Museums, the Grand Canal, the Vaporettos, the islands, the glass making in, in Murano, the lace making in Burano and Torcello. When I go back now, I don't go to paint. I go just to enjoy myself. I like to do things in threes or fives, odd numbers. Even when I'm painting flowers or whatever, still I, I try to keep it at, at, at an odd. This painting is a is one of of threes. There's a trilogy sort of thing. There's this is in Little Italy in New York City. It's a, it's an area that I used to work in, and I have uh, a soft spot for Little Italy and, and Chinatown in, in New York City. There's a lot of graphics in here, much of it is in Italian. Uh, 
but it also has a Chinese influence because Chinatown and Little Italy are commingling. Oh, it's the typical New York City parking sign. It's no parking, no parking, no parking. You can't tell when you can park on the street. I do have bricks in a lot of my paintings. Um, I like doing bricks. They're fun. And um, it's monotonous and tedious, but they're fun. Um, there's some masking in here. I, I enjoy creating graphics. Um, there was a lot of work in these no parking signs. Yes, they probably could be more exact, but you know what, if you want exact, take a picture. Angelo's is a, a Little Italy landmark. Um, I think when presidents go to New York City, I believe they eat at Angelo's. It's part of Little Italy. Um, there's graphics in here about Little Italy, Sorrento cheese. Um, again, complimentary colors. Little Italy is a very vibrant area. And you, when you combine it with Chinatown, which is also a vibrant area, it's life on top of life. Um, here is a, uh, here's the third in my trilogy. This is Cafe Roma, um, not too far from Angelo's. And um, this is the third in the series of three. I came out to California, and that was uh, 14 years ago. And these have been the best 14 years of my life. I think.